Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Jesus or Muhammad, the greatest show in history. Uh, I'm here tonight yes. with my friends Sam Shamoon and C.L. Edwards. Uh, you all know them. And we're going to have a special guest here in a few minutes, uh, Anthony Rogers, who uh, we're convinced is, is one of the uh, best Christian apologists out there. Uh, but you haven't seen him before here, and tonight we'll uh, show you what he's got for us. We're going to be focusing on a very important passage in the Quran. Uh, in fact, if, if you're going to, as a Christian, if you're going to look at a passage of the Quran uh, to understand uh, the Muslim position on Christianity, uh, it's probably the most important passage you can look into. It's Surah 4, verse 157 through verse 158. This is the passage that talks about uh, the crucifixion of Jesus. It gives uh, what Muslims believe to be the Jewish reaction to what happened with Jesus. And so it's a very interesting passage, and it's a passage that allows us to test Islam. Now, what do I mean here? Well, think about this. There are certain things that we can investigate directly. So let's take uh, something like uh, the Trinity. M Muslims say God is not a Trinity. Christians say God is a Trinity. That's not something that we can look at directly. You can't put God under a microscope and say, well, he is a trinity. We, we, we examined it scientifically and we found that God is a trinity. You can't do that. But there are situations where we can directly investigate something uh, because a certain claim is made that allows us to investigate it directly. And Jesus' crucifixion, the Jewish response to Jesus, these are things that we can investigate directly. And so here in the Quran, in Surah 4, Claims about Jesus and about the Jews and what Jews were saying about Jesus, all these claims are being made and it allows us to investigate what really happened to see if Islam matches up. And if Islam lines up, well, then Islam is right on the money. And if Islam doesn't line up, well, Islam's got a problem. Uh, so we're going to look at this passage. I'm going to begin by asking our brother CL to tell us a little bit about what his view was of this passage um, about Jesus. Uh, because our friend is a former Muslim, he was a Salafi up until just several months ago. And so, Brother Ciel, what did you think about this passage in the Quran? Well, Dave, um, as Muslims, we always believe that this text here was like a damning proof against Christianity. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because, you know, the whole thing is, if Jesus dies and he's resurrected, you kind of throw out all the claims of Islam, you know. But you have to have something to dismiss the claims of Christianity. So we used to love to quote this to show, listen, you Christians, you've got it dead wrong. Also, this was, you know, it was thought to be like knowledge mm -hmm. that Muhammad had that other people just didn't have, which was a proof of his prophethood. Mm -hmm. You know, that Muhammad knew this secret that all you Christians didn't know about for the last 600 years before he came on the scene, that he had this revelation that Jesus was never killed. He was never put on the cross. Thereby, there was no blood atonement or resurrection at all. You Christians have it wrong. We have the real, you know, secret knowledge, and we're here to give it to you. Last sticks, huh? Yeah, no, it's so, kind of like that. So this is, this is something that really strikes at the heart of the disagreement between Christians and Muslims. Our, 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 our primary disagreement concerns the identity of Jesus and what Jesus came here to accomplish and what he did accomplish. So I'm going to go ahead and read this passage to you, and then I'm going to uh, hand things over to our brother Anthony Rogers, uh, to see what he thinks about this passage. Uh, let me go ahead and read to you, Surah 4, verse 157 through 158. And because of their saying, talking about the Jews here, their saying uh, refers to what the Jews were saying, and because of their saying, we slew the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, Allah's messenger. They slew him not, nor crucified him, but it appeared so unto them. And lo, those who disagree concerning it are in doubt thereof. They have no knowledge thereof, save the pursuit of a conjecture. They slew him not for certain. But Allah took him up unto himself. Allah was ever mighty wise. So, uh, the Jews were boasting that they had killed Jesus, that they had killed the Messiah, that they had killed the son of Mary, that they had killed Allah's messenger, but they didn't slay him, they didn't crucify him, it appeared to them as if they did. And those who, uh, who disagree with Muhammad's position or those who are arguing about what happened, we're in doubt. But Islam comes to bring us the truth, to tell us the truth, to end our doubts and our conjectures and our disputes. And if that's, if that's true, we can all thank God for Muhammad to correct us. 
But if it's wrong, and if Muhammad's position is wrong, well, Muslims need to look somewhere else for the truth. So do we have, uh, do we have Brother, Brother Anthony? Not yet? Okay, well, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're still getting <laughs> we connected with, <laughs> with Anthony. Uh, Sam. All right, yeah. Good old Sam. What's Sam going to do right now? <laughs> Sam, yeah. you have trillions of articles on this, don't you? Yeah, I have too many articles, but I don't want to give away Anthony's case. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, before we even begin discussing tonight, as is my habit, I just want to ask the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, our glorious Lord and Savior, <clears throat> the Father's eternally beloved Son, to bless everyone tonight. Bless my brother David. Bless uh, CL. Bless Anthony Rogers and myself to speak truth without error. I beg the Lord Jesus Christ that in the power of his Holy Spirit, <clears throat> he'll, he'll enable us to speak with clarity of thought and speech, represent what Muslims believe accurately, and present solid objections demonstrating why the Quran cannot be true concerning anything that it says about Jesus, except those statements that agree with the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. And I beg the Lord Jesus that in everything we say and do, he will get the glory. We will not seek the praise of men, but his honor, glory, and praise, and that the church will be strengthened through this in Jesus' name. <clears throat> now, again, I don't want to comment too much on this because Anthony Rogers is a dear brother, a dear brother to all of us. We know him uh, through the websites that we all write for. And on Pell Talk, Anthony Rogers has been gifted by the Lord Jesus Christ in a mighty way, in a unique way, in a special way. And I want the Lord to be magnified through the gifts that he's given Anthony Rogers, and I want him to make the case. Uh, but what is interesting, I can comment briefly and let me know when he's on, because I don't want to just keep talking and talking and make it the Sam Shamoon Show, even though they do call me Triple B, Big, Bald, and Beautiful. But anyway. That's not what uh, I call you. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, you still need to repent of that envy in your heart, but that's okay, brother. We're being perfected. The one thing about chapter 4, verse 157, it's ironic, David, that that passage says that those who doubt what the Quran has to say concerning Jesus' final moments on earth, are full of conjecture. However, it's actually the Muslims who are full of conjecture because to this day, the Muslims do not have one interpretation of Surah 4, 157. There are various interpretations offered by various Muslim scholars, not just today, but even historically. Let me just mention one that's very old that's attributed to Ibn Abbas. Now, some of you may be wondering who Ibn Abbas is. Ibn Abbas was Muhammad's first cousin considered one of the greatest Muslim scholars that ever lived. In fact, we have CL right here, mm. former Muslim who, by the grace of Jesus Christ, has abandoned the darkness of Islam and has come to the glorious you. light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord of glory. As a Salafi, what was your view of Ibn Abbas before I give this tradition attributed to him? Ibn Abbas was gold. I mean, <laughs> this is the prophet. Not only he's a Sahabi, he's a direct Disciple. Explain Sahabi what it is for those who don't speak Arabic. A, a Sahabi is a companion. You know, he, Muhammad called his disciples his Sahaba, his companions. So he was a Sahaba, a direct uh, disciple and student of Muhammad. Now, only that he was his cousin. He was a relative of his. He was a part of his family. And third, Muhammad prayed directly for him to receive knowledge of the interpretation of the Quran. Wow. And the other Sahaba, like um, Abu Bakr, used to take him and around the, the older Sahaba so he could explain the Quran to them. He was just a young boy. Mm. And he would amaze them at his explanation. And that's supposedly an answer to Muhammad's request. Yes. Supposedly, uh, Muhammad invoked Allah, bless Ibn Abbas with wisdom concerning the deen, specifically the Quran. And supposedly, Allah answered it and made Ibn Abbas one of the greatest Muslim scholars that ever lived. Mm. With that said, According to Ibn Kathir, and for those of you listening, Ibn Kathir is considered one of the greatest, most authoritative Muslim commentators on the Quran. You can actually read an abridged translation of Ibn Kathir online for free. Go to the following websites. Go to www.tafsir.com. Tafsir.com. Let me spell Tafsir real quickly. T-A-F-S-I-R. <clears throat> you can find this abridged version online for free so you don't have to buy the hard copies which would cost you about a hundred dollars that same abridged version is found on another URL www .q, the letter Q tefsir.com Q tefsir.com according to Ibn Kathir a tradition that goes back to Ibn Abbas concerning the meaning of Surah 4157 is the following on the night of the Lord Jesus's betrayal 